everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Um, it has been a hot minute since I have recorded one before, and there's been lots of things going on in my life. Um, some of them very amazing, and some of them very challenging. Uh, so today, what I want, what I would love to speak with you about, one, I just want to <sighs> drop in with all of you again because I miss you. And also, um, I'm really excited to share more about the new earth vision that I am building here on Copenhagen in person. And also, even if you don't come to Copenhagen, you're part of it by listening to this and receiving the transmission um, because we sometimes are <coughs> strategically placed around the world to be these like. Um, beacons of life like of light like locking in the grid you know of so if you are around people where you're like no one is around me that feels like me that thinks like me that has the same vision of what we could create in the world maybe it's because you're the one who's activating the people around you and that's really beautiful so I understand that it also can be very lonely <laughs> I've been there in my life um and that's why you receiving this transmission, you are part of the tribe, you know, like you are here as light workers. This is the universal message. This is everyone can be part of this. Um, and all souls will eventually get there, whether it's in this timeline or the next one. So if we are awake in the timeline right now or waking up, it's so beautiful because we can help guide other people into the love and the light that is a higher vibration that is choosing, understanding the darkness, understanding all the other possible timelines and choosing the, the timeline, choosing to build the life that is focused on groundedness and our center, our connection to source, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it. And being able to, from this grounded source connection, share our vibration out of beauty and light and building community and taking care of the earth and understanding that we can choose love over fear like this is the big opportunity that all of us have within our individual timelines and as a collective consciousness are we going to choose to the option of love or are we going to let ourselves be overwhelmed and sink into the fear and one of the biggest things that people don't realize is that <laughs> we are one of the only consciousness, like as a planet and the, like, you know, as a planet, we have this collective consciousness. So that this means that everything that we know collectively that is like publicly well known and is ac accepted in the mass consciousness. We are one of the few in the multiverse that has chosen to come down from our soul source connection to come down and forget that we have a source connection and in the forgetting from the moment that you are born to the remembering of your source connection this is where the biggest opportunity of growth is for a soul in the timeline and this is why many 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 souls are coming down here in this very big transformational age as well because it's not just darkness. It's like, wow, we can be part of the shift of transforming from the darkness, choosing the light, and in that shift, in that timeline of us coming down into our physical bodies and forgetting that we have this mission and that we're part of this beautiful transformation, we can also grow our soul. We can also grow our consciousness. We can also figure out who we are when we forget because the thing this is why I always say it's not about what happens it's not about how challenging the thing is it's not the f about the fact that you know I was sexually molested as a kid or I grew up in a cult it's like who did I choose to be in response to all of those things happening externally who did I choose to be as a soul in the timeline and for me I've always chosen I want to do it in the most beautiful way. I want to forgive and let it go. And of course, speak up for myself as much as I can and be in my power. Whatever is the most empowering, whatever is the most connected to my body, connected to my 
my own personal source connection. I don't know if you can hear, but it's I, I live in the jungle here in Koponyang, and it just started to rain. It's supposed to be dry season now, but I love the rain, so and the island really needs it. The earth really needs it. So <sighs> I invite you to take a deep breath with me. I got really excited because I have missed making podcasts, so I jumped right in. So I invite you, if you're in a space where you um, feel comfortable, to close your eyes. And just breathe in and expand your stomach like you're pregnant as much as you can. So when you breathe in, expand. And then imagine the air going all the way up your spine through the top of your head. And then all the way up into source, like uh, this golden thread connecting you to your source connection. And then sigh out. (sighs) And try it one more time. Breathe in. All the way at the top, all the way through the top of your head, all the way to source. And then uh, breathe it out. So many podcasts like feel that they need to rush through and give you all this information. And I'm like, where are we rushing to? Where is the goal? Let's create spaciousness. Let's feel juicy in our bodies. Let's drop in. So I hope that you can use this as a permission slip. At any moment, if anything of this is landing in your body and you're like realizing you're really processing something, just pause, just pause the episode and let your body catch up, allow yourself to process and really give yourself that permission in anything in life. If anything feels like triggering or it's hitting really close to home and you want to process, create the space. <laughs> we have been programmed as a society to not create space for ourselves and for each other to rush. And I, I literally, I'm like, where are you going? You're going to work? To do what? You're going, you're going somewhere else? Where do, what do you do? Like, what I'm saying is, like, what is the point of all of this if we don't feel good in our bodies? Like, the most important thing <sighs> is that you feel juicy in your body and that you feel connected to source. You feel connected to something bigger than us. We are so connected and so loved by ourselves each other the universe our higher selves and this is the biggest opportunity for the click 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 moment in your life is when you realize you are not alone you are not alone in the timeline no matter how much you feel alone if you are waking up right now spiritually And you're like, no one is like me around me. And when I talk to my family, they don't get it. And, you know, you have some confusion because you're still like releasing negative beliefs and you're not really sure like where it all lands, you know, and that's okay. And what I'm trying to tell you is your biggest resource right now in those moments is your connection to your body, your connection to your intuition and your connection to source. So use permission slips to help you connect to source, whether this is meditating, yoga, going into nature, and just being in nature, you know? You will start to quiet down all of this programming, all these voices in your head, and you will start to hear yourself. And for those who feel supported and they feel grounded in it, also psychedelics can help. I say this with a lot of disclaimer of making sure that you are resource grounded. And if you've never done it before, I highly recommend having someone host you. Uh, For me, my favorite permission slip when it comes to psychedelics when I was waking up was to take mushrooms and go into the jungle, especially next to water, because I'm Scorpio everywhere in my astrology chart. So I love water. And I would just sit in the stream and just look at the jungle And I would just cry because for the first time, everything made sense. And I didn't even have to explain it to anyone. I didn't even have words for it. I just felt so connected to source. It's really interesting to talk about psychedelics because um, Faraday and I haven't been taking them for many months now. And... um, I feel the calling to do ayahuasca again. Uh, I've only done ayahuasca once in my life. I've um, done many other things uh, when it comes to psychedelics, but I've only done once. Uh, For me, it's also finding or receiving in a facilitator 
who hosts the ceremony in a way that I feel safe and I have very, very high standards for feeling safe. And this is something a lot of you reach out to me when you come to Koponyang and you're like asking about psychedelics and like different things. And I, I just want to keep saying like, no matter what I say, you need to really honor your intuition because yes, I have a very high standard for safety. So I probably can let you know if something is safe or not when it comes to th- known quantities of people on the island that I know and all this stuff. But uh, I also get some of you reaching out and saying like, I don't feel really called to do this psychedelic experience, but the facilitator is not letting me meet them in person before the event. And I'm like, that's already a red flag. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I said, how do you feel in your body? It doesn't feel good. Okay, honor your body. Because it should flow all the way through. You should never feel disempowered in any way. You should never feel, and this is for anything, anything in the spiritual community. A lot of people, when they wake up spiritually, they're like so open because they're so excited to be spiritually awake. So they're so open to whatever is coming in, in their vortex. And yes, a lot of it comes through synchronicity. And also some of that you need to really filter and decide for yourself is my intuition, like really check in, is my intuition saying that this is a good idea? Should I really follow my body? Because maybe, yes, you, you, your body wants you to take psychedelics, but not with this person or not in this situation, you know? So like always, always be flowing. Don't get your physical mindset. It needs to be this way or, you know, I decided I was going to do this and so now I'm going to do it. Everything should feel good all the way through. And this is with everything. <laughs> um, but I'm just speaking more right now on your spiritual journey because I just had a lot of cases here on the island where um, I'm excited to start doing women's circles again here because there is a lot of um, beautiful women coming to the island and it's it's a very safe space to wake up spiritually. And also at the same time, there is some things that people, women could know in order to have a more safe experience here because there are guys on the island that are just like predatorily (laughs) um yeah picking on the fact that women are so open and receptive here and that's something I feel very protected over protective over so I'm excited to but this is like what I love is like on Copenhagen is the first time first place in the world I've been to over 60 countries where I feel one at home here because I've also lived in Thailand for eight years and to like I speak the like the language not fluently but enough to get by and three the conscious community is in a place where yeah of course in every community wherever you go around the world it's not the new earth and so there's still like fucked up things that happen but there's enough accountability and enough sisterhood here on the island um and also like elders like people who have are older and like really care about the community who are here and like watching out there's people like and this is what tribe is it's not that bad things don't happen it's that when bad things happen there's people you can go to you know and things get worked through because there's always challenges right so this is a place where I feel like the challenges make sense because I am held in tribe with them and then we grow together and that's really beautiful Something that I have been, it's like a project that's been birthing through me is uh, creating a new ecstatic dance here on the island. And if you don't know what a static dance is, it is, it's basically a sober dance that I really like the vibration of like African tribal music. And it goes into a wave of like slow to peak and it's supposed to, and then back to slow and then peak. It's supposed to help you go through Um, like energy clearings in your body. This is actually what a static dance is. And it's a connection and tribe to do it together. So it's kind of like our dancing, you know, we joke that it's like church for us. Like this is us. Uh, We wake up and go to a static dance together and see each other in community. And then inside the static dance is no talking, no phones. And so you just are dancing and it's just like us all being kids. There's been many static dances here on the island for you know the last 20 years and they go around the whole world there's tons of them everywhere and I've been very excited to create a vibration of one that is from from my vibration and my sense of my sensitivity is very high so I was and I also grew up playing drums and I love 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 music and I love dancing so uh, we are going to host them weekly starting next week um, at Rosaruna, this is a place here on the island, and the vision is to 
gather together in a safe place uh, in tribe and like really build this rhythm of seeing each other once a week, dancing together, releasing emotions, connecting, you know, having a vegan potluck where everyone brings food and being this foundation of connection for each other so that when we grow we have these touch points of I know you I see you every week now we're friends now we hang out more like this is the foundation of the tribe and when you primarily look at like where music started uh, back in the day when we actually were in tribes it was from the leaders of the community the shamans they would come and they would do music ceremonies with the tribe and it would bring everyone together and they would use this as a connection opportunity to connect to source um and you see this now in religions, like they do this with churches, this is why they sing together. And I'm like, all of these are permission slips to connect to each other and connect to source. And like, w- what would it take to do this in a way that is new earth vibration and healthy and safe and it feels good in our bodies? And yeah, it's like individually we're connecting to source and then we're con- we are collectively connecting to each other and sharing our vibration outward like it's so beautiful to come together and do this together so I get very excited about this I could go on forever um so our next our first one is if uh is December 28th um at Ross Rumina and yeah you can find it on my Instagram everywhere I'm posting it everywhere sharing it everywhere in our community chats um So also, if you're coming to the island, always reach out because we have a German community chat and an English community chat here. And it's our like our core chat for the island. Um, But yeah, I just I I I have taken a break um, recently and it was honestly because I had some really negative things happen in our lives, you know, like. I'm still not sure I'm going to share this in here and I'm not sure if I'm actually going to like post it publicly, but like Faraday and I were attacked on the beach, um, by someone that we made a podcast about on Faraday's channel, which you can find easily. Um, and I don't even want to say his name because it's like, he's not worthy of it. (laughs) It's someone who has very negative energy. Uh, but the idea of, holding hands and walking heart open on the beach, my favorite beach that I used to live at for most of the time I've been here on the island, and then having someone jump you and attack you. And in my opinion, he's very mentally unstable. And then, and then like, what do you do with that? Like we went to the police, we're building a, we're building a case against him, like talking to immigration and our embassies and all this stuff. But it's like, there's this feeling in my body like from a deep somatic so this is like the experience that's happening in my body where it took me about a week to unfreeze so they say when like a trauma happens you go into fight flight or freeze mode so you fight the person or you run away or you just freeze like a like they say like a deer in the headlights when a car comes at a deer sometimes they just freeze and they don't know what to do and in the moment when it happens I I I ran away like I ran and got friends and they helped um, him like get off of Faraday and I and then afterwards like we reported to the police we're talking to the community elders like it's being handled but I just froze because I was like what if we go out and we see him you know and there's something in my body that just started to feel really unsafe and I felt this way like when I lived in New York City or when I visited Rio or Cape Town but I'm like this is my home like this is my island and this is what do I do and also how do I protect other people from this because this just shouldn't happen in the world you know and so there's been this is also why I've been quiet the last couple weeks because I have been really allowing myself to process this and like really connecting to like my chosen family my very small crew of people like unplugging from social media And allowing my body to like really process and connect to my soul family who has a calm nervous system and are supporting us in this. And we feel very supported in this. And also it's showing us who our real friends are. 
which I, I, it was painful to have a couple situations happen where people just didn't get it or they responded in a way that didn't feel good in my body. Um, and I, I'm just like, I hope that no one has to ever experience this, but it will be a time when people realize and they understand the full scope of the situation and that's okay. And in the meantime, I have enough people in my life who get it and are like part of my soul tribe and that I'm so excited to build things with for the new earth and for our community that if someone doesn't get it, they like this is it's okay. This is what it is. It showed me my standard of who I want in my life and who I am excited to build things with because when you wake up spiritually, you really, you break out of this programming of like fear and domination. And like, this is, I call this old world programming of like, you need to, you know, like for instance, if we got attacked, Faraday needs to attack back. He didn't, you know, he stood his ground, but he didn't, he didn't attack back. And this is, this is what I mean. Is like, there's this situations where it's like, when you wake up to spiritually, you're like, I'm not going to keep this karma going back and forth. Right. Like I'm like, you can be in your negativity and try and attack us, but we're going to have our firm ground and we're supported by the police and our community, but I'm not putting any negative energy back. But there are people who believe that the best thing to do is actually just receive negativity and not speak up or hold ground. And what I'm trying to tell you is like, your standard, I invite you, you can do whatever you want, but I invite you to have a standard where you being spiritually awake means it's safe to be in your power and it's safe to have boundaries with people and it's safe to speak up for yourself and to be held in community with that. I wish that for you. I wish that for everyone. And I'm so grateful that I have it for myself and for my community. And like, and I provide this for my community. Um, and so I invite you to have standards that if like, it's so easy to be friends when everything is going great. And most people I'm realizing do not have real friends. They have what I call acquaintances. This is someone that you have a good time with and you can party with. And when you see them out, you're like so excited to say hi to each other. But these are not people where when shit goes down, you call them for help. Like for me, a friend is someone that when I want to play, they are there. They are there to celebrate my good times. They are there to remind me of my power. And they are also there when I don't know my center. I cannot connect to my source. I feel very ungrounded. And they are there to remind me of my power, remind me of my center, help me to have a calm nervous system and also have my back when shit goes down, like stand up for me, be like not retaliating, not creating more negative energy or karma in the world, but creating a firm foundation and firm like boundaries <laughs> between me and the world when I am not strong enough to do that. Because this is the thing is like, in order to have a real calm nervous system, like, for instance, I'll give you an example. In the tribes, like, back in the day, like, so, like, Native American tribes, like, you know, they're roaming, they, they go all over the, the Americas. The worst thing that you could have happen to you would be to be cast out from the tribe and have to sleep outside of the tribal barriers. This is because animals can attack you, anything can get, other other tribes can come after you. And from a somatic experiencing level, from like what's happening in your body, you are not able to have a calm nervous system. Most people today live in this fight or fight mode because they don't have this community where their nervous system can be calm. They actually, from a very subconscious level, are always having to look out for themselves because they don't know what's going to happen next. They don't really have the support and I'm talking from an emotional level. I'm not saying from a physical level. I'm sure everyone, most people in the world, hopefully, are physically safe. But I'm speaking from an emotional reality perspective. Like, this is where we are. Like, today's warfare, yes, there's physical warfare happening in the world. I would tell you that most of the warfare that's happening is actually spiritual and emotional warfare that's happening. We have grown our 
as a collective and raise our vibration that thank goodness we have most of our growth happen without having to escalate to physical violence. Um, but from an emotional standpoint, most people don't realize that like <laughs> they have never experienced being held in tribe where when they're down and they don't know what to do, they can lean on someone else and they can go to sleep and be able to get a good night's sleep and have a calm nervous system knowing that emotionally, psychically, and physically, if needed, they are supported by their community. And this is what I offer 100% to my community. And this is what I do for my community. I show up for my community physically, spiritually, emotionally, all the time. It is very vulnerable for me to <laughs> need that from my community. And it's also very beautiful because when that happens, it shows you who actually gets it and shows up and has your back. So <laughs> there has been many lessons learned, many challenges overcome in the last couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, like I also got really sick and I realized like how much, um, I don't think people talk about this enough, but like, like I have faced quite a lot of depression in my life. Um, I don't like, you know, I made podcasts about me being raised in a cult and stuff. And like, I don't really talk about it that much because I choose not to focus on that timeline. Like that is something, this is where I come from. I've learned the lessons of, you know, being abused as a kid, growing up in a cult, blah, 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 blah. But like, I don't carry this with me as trauma. I have, I have really done my shadow work and faced it and worked, processed it. And also at the same time, my body still has this trauma that sometimes needs to release. They call it titrating where you, if you open the faucet and it all comes out, it can be very overwhelming for the nervous system. So you have to, titrating is when you like lift the faucet up, let some out, process it, close the faucet. And you do this in a way where your body can resource and your nervous system can feel safe and can process it a little at a time. So this is what I do and I am very held in community and support and this is also why I feel called to do ayahuasca again soon because I really <laughs> want to process some more of this stuff. Um, but you know, w because of all the stuff that happened um, in my life growing up, I faced a lot of depression and I was actually on antidepressants for like five or six years until I changed my life. I left my cult. I started traveling. I left my ex-husband. I was in a very unhappy marriage with an alcoholic. Like I left all of that and I started traveling and suddenly I just didn't need my antidepressants anymore because it was actually my life that was making me depressed. It wasn't a chemical imbalance in my brain. Um, but I know very, very, I'm very familiar with the darkness and like waking up and being like, what is the point of living? I've never felt like I ever wanted to seriously commit suicide, but I understand the darkness of where that is. You know, like I know I've been to those depths. And when I get sick, sometimes I don't realize how sick I am because my body processes it as, um, as I'm getting depressed again. And then I go into this overdrive mode because for many years when I was depressed, I almost couldn't get out of bed to go to work and I needed to work because I needed money. Um, and so I would push myself. I would like just keep going. I would go into overdrive. And so this was what was happening last week when I was sick. I was like getting up and feeling like I need to do all these things. Friday night I even made a podcast together and I was like really not like a happy vibration in my podcast because I was actually very ill. I'm just laughing at it and also wanting to give myself like my inner child a hug because what I really needed was to just have someone remind me that I'm not falling into depression. I'm just sick and it's okay and it's okay and it's okay to rest. It's safe to rest because in the past I didn't have actual physical financial safety like way in the past when I was leaving my religion. I didn't have any support. I was completely alone in New York City uh, as a single woman trying to figure out my life. And thankfully I had gone to school and was able to get a very good job. But you know, the financial safety of like 
if everything falls apart, I don't have anyone to lean on. Most people will never experience what that is like, and I don't wish that on anyone. But that can cause a lot of stress in your body and also can cause this natural to feel very depressed by everything I'd gone through and, and this current situation that I was in when I first left my cult. So anyways, I'm just really grateful uh, for Faraday for like I had basically had a morning where I was just crying a lot and I was like, I'm just in this really dark place and I don't know what's going on and I feel like I'm getting like in this like depressive spiral all over again and he's just like, you are really sick. I honor everything that you're going through and also let's check in tomorrow. Like, like just give yourself permission to just rest all day long and and then let's check in tomorrow morning and if you still feel this way, let's have a deeper discussion. And so I did. I gave myself permission to just flow and rest and watch TV and then the next day I felt totally fine and I was like, oh my God, I really just needed to rest. Uh, but it scared me. Like I actually was like scared at where at the depths of the pain that of emotional pain I was in and then I was like you know what it's okay like I'm okay and I'm supported in community and I'm supported in my partnership and I also talked about it with some other close girlfriends and like everyone was like yeah it's okay like you're okay I'm here for you I'm with you if you need anything and also some of them were like I have also been there and I don't really talk about it that much and I'm like why don't we talk about this more you know like you can be strong and also have really dark times and that can also be part of your story like it doesn't need to be that we're perfect perfection is not growing your consciousness we're here as souls to grow our consciousness so, whew, let's take a deep breath on that one. Hmm. There's other things I wanted to say and I forgot. Mm, just feeling into this. I guess I just really want to celebrate like where I am in the timeline. I feel like I don't take enough space to do that with myself and with others because um, I feel like we should all do this more. <laughs> like, oh, this is what it was. I was talking to someone about, they were like, okay, so this depressive, this, these depressive states, like, do you want to like look into that and like feel into that? And I was, and I was like, oh my God. Um, I don't know how you are, but like for me, I dream a lot. And I remember my dreams a lot of times when I first wake up, I used to have a dream journal. I'd write them all down when I was still half asleep. And that was really cool. I highly recommend that. Um, and then when people speak things to me throughout the day, suddenly a, a dream will come to me of like, oh, I've been having these dreams. And I realized that honestly, probably 80% of my dreams are me being stuck in my cult and screaming like within my church screaming and and no nothing is coming out like this little girl who's screaming because she's in so much pain and nothing's coming out and no one's listening to her and I just think wow like I'm still processing so much trauma <laughs> and also giving that little girl so much love and hugs and honoring yeah just honoring where I come from and celebrating where I'm at now and I I just keep thinking like, yeah, this is why I feel like I, I am one of these souls that just came here to share so much light because I could spend the rest of my lifetime processing this trauma and I will, but in small amounts, I have so much energy to give to the collective and serve and create beautiful things in the world and enjoy. Like, what is the point of being here if we are not enjoying ourselves? So I am here to speak all of that to you that if you have anything along these lines if you resonate with any of this in any way please know that it gets better and that you're not alone and it's okay to feel all of the things don't let them overwhelm you but get some support so that you can work through it in a way that is not traumatizing you even more in the past when I wanted to release my trauma I tried to do it too quickly for how s safe it felt in my body it was like too fast for my body and you can actually re-traumatize yourself. So be careful. Go slowly. So much trauma happens when too much, too fast, and it overloads your nervous system. 
And so it's really important to slow down and really just check in with your body and see how you feel. If anyone or anything is making you feel too much too fast, take a break. Take some space. Check in with your body. See if you want to shift anything in those situations or those dynamics, those constellations with people so that your body can feel more safe and things can flow better for you because you deserve that. And I'm here as the anti-cult leader to tell you that like, I am so excited for everyone to step into their full power and to be have their individual connection to source and be their unique puzzle piece in the timeline and shine and lead the community with us and like get to a point where we don't need any leaders because everyone just is getting it and we can just vibe and like have play parties and just have so much fun together like this is this is my goal <laughs> in life um, and I'm having fun every step of the way and some days I cry a lot and some days I feel very in my power. I feel like even when I'm crying, I'm in my power. <laughs> One thing that I realized with the situation when we got attacked was like the thing that made me feel most in my power was speaking up because as women, there is this huge dynamic um, to not speak up because there is a lot of shame around should I have done something different or... Um, victim blaming what's where like you share something and then other people just say well maybe you deserved it or you shouldn't have done this thing and then that caused it it's like no matter what is going on in the situation no one no one has permission to attack someone else physically no one has permission to hurt anyone physically and hopefully they don't do it emotionally psychically spiritually but like we draw a firm line when it comes to physical violence like anyone who is physically harming anyone, they need to go away. They need to shift away until they figure it out and they can come back. Like I am not their permission slip to work their shit out. This is boundaries. <laughs> and I realized that by speaking up and being heard in my community, it was healing this huge wound that I had of this inner child growing up where I was screaming and no one was listening. Like I was screaming for help. I was very overwhelmed by all of the negativity and all of the abuse and just suppression. Uh, and no one was listening. And I endured that and I chose to still be powerful in my timeline and chose to be loving and heart open. And that for me is the biggest celebration of who I am as a soul. And I invite you to really look into who you are choosing to be in your timeline in response to whatever is happening because if you're able to be in your grounded center and respond in a way where you believe that everything is going to work out and fucking speak up for yourself when you need to have firm boundaries speak your truth everything will work out and ask for help from your community and if you don't have the community reach out online and build a community and if you you I will tell you that for most of the last 10 years, I didn't have a community. I built the community that I wanted. Every single one of you who's listening to this has the power inside of you to create whatever community that you want. Whatever soul family you want, whatever you want, you have the power to create it. I always say in my, in my events, if I can do this, you can too. I used to work in the legal field for six years in a corporate law firm like you know like and then I went and of course I went and studied and like learned a lot about trauma awareness and holding safe spaces and facilitation training but it's about having the intention to learn and to show up and to create what you want and then a lot of it was creating things and figuring it out as I went along you know and so I'm doing, saying all of this as an activation for you, that you are more powerful than you realize, that you can have everything that you want and you desire and you crave. So release any negative beliefs that it's not possible, it's not meant for you, or you're not supported. You are. You are guided and supported by your higher self, by your soul, and you are perfectly where you need to be in the timeline. The only way that you will ever feel that you will miss something is if you worry about missing something. 
and I have to remind myself of this all the time because I get so excited of all the things that I can feel coming like I have this psychic ability where I can really sense the collective consciousness and I can sense where things are going to happen in the world like before COVID I knew something was happening I'm not going to go into that story but I knew very consciously that something like this was going to happen and the world was going to shut down and I can feel something very very big happening very soon within the next two years um, maybe even within the next six months but there is a going to be a big collective awakening and this is all so beautiful because this is what we want we want more people to get it you know and so I'm just here like eating popcorn like how can I help host y'all as you wake up so you don't freak out and stay grounded like it's okay stay connected to your body stay connected to source like the idea is how much consciousness can we hold and going through our body in a way that feels grounded. This is what the goal is because we are all waking up. There's no rush. And if you're listening to this transmission, you're already very far in the timeline. So you might look around and be like, why is no one else getting it? And you might be one of these leaders who needs to activate the people around you and help them get it. And I'm not saying going out preaching. I'm saying by being being the vibration being grounded in your center being positive like you know just being there's so much to the activation of just being the person that is the new earth vibration um and i follow i follow people on instagram all around the world that i just love seeing what they're doing and it's not like they're a lot of them are not doing like quote unquote spiritual work like what you would look at and say, oh, like they're a healer or this and that. They're doing stuff out in societies, but they're doing it with this new earth vibration. And so many people are getting activated. And it's so beautiful because like I'm specifically thinking of one friend, Patrick, who lives in Austria. And he came to our flow state retreat and like he works with kids, you know, like he works with kids teaching them, uh, I think, self-defense and but he really is teaching them how to love themselves and how to be in tribe and like and and is being this grounded masculine of like it's okay to feel your feelings and like it's okay to share them with people and here's a safe space and let's play and I'm like this is so beautiful like the this is going to change every single child who ever comes into the vortex of this person's energy field because they know that that vibration is out there even if it's not conscious they know that oh there's another choice that we have to make here is a vibration that we can we can be also and it's safe to be this you know oh I could talk so much longer um there's a lot more I have to say I am committed to making more podcasts so uh, I told Faraday this morning, let's see how it goes. Because I say some, sometimes I make myself a challenge and then I flow state happens. Uh, but I'm making myself a fun challenge to do a podcast a week, uh, every day for the week. Wow, words. Um, even if it's like 10 or 15 minutes long, just so I can get in the rhythm of it and also share the vibration with you. And yeah, just know that we are all in this together and we are all figuring it out. And there's times where all of us are like what the fuck is going on and it's okay and what I say is it's okay to be in the void of like the unknown and I don't know how this is going to work out all I want to know is that I'm doing it with my people and I'm connected to my tribe because then we're in the void together we're in the unknown together and as long as we're connected and I'm connected to my own source connection I'm good you know I'm happy so I'm sending you all lots of love, grounded energy. Hope you have an amazing day. And yeah, just keep being yourself. Keep being your authentic self. Keep being s- safe, feeling safe to be in your power, creating more space for yourself to feel your emotions, to feel into what feels good in your body, trust your intuition, all the things. This is Brittany Bond signing off. And again, if you want to come to our aesthetic dance next Thursday, December 28th, uh, the doors open at 6.30 p.m. and we are going to dance. I'm very excited. Okay, have a beautiful day. Bye.